Most Canadians have heard of this heroine behind me, Laura Secord. Unfortunately, most people associate her with chocolate, but Laura Secord was more than just chocolate. She's a great part of Canadian history. We are on our way up to do the walk that Laura Secord made back in the 1800s to warn the British that the Americans were coming. Did you in your wildest dreams ever imagine walking miles upon miles to warn the British that the Americans were about to attack you? And just think, you did this walking with a cow. I love Niagara. I have a question for you. What do you know about Niagara? It has a really big fault. I have a question for you. Do you like history? So let me ask you, is that a rhetorical question? Okay, so we we're talking about the more obscure places in Niagara. Some of the coolest history is not even in Niagara Falls. Is there a Niagara what else do you have to say for yourself? Good morning, I'm Donald and I'm all about history. And I'm all about the base. The base. If you're born, raised, or visit Niagara, you're always from Niagara. One of the greatest places on earth. The town of Queenston is a compact rural community and unincorporated place five kilometers north of Niagara Falls in the town of Niagara-on-the-Lake, Ontario, Canada. In the early 19th century, the community's name was actually spelled as Queen's Town. Queenston marks the southern terminus of the Bruce Trail. The cairn marking the trail's terminus is in a parking lot exactly 520 feet from General Brock's Monument in Queenston Heights Park on the easterly side of the monument's park grounds. It sits across from the Niagara River from the old town of Lewiston, New York. Queenston became part of the town of Niagara-on-the-Lake in 1970. Today, several of its historical buildings still remain. Laura Secord is considered one of Canada's greatest heroines. That is, she had one of the most profound effects on Canadian history, if not North American history. It was Laura Secord who warned the British that the Americans were coming and marched from this place behind me, her homestead, in Queenston Heights, Ontario, all the way to the DeQ House up in Thorold St. Catharines area. Join us as we go on the trail, the Laura Secord journey, through each segment of her walk as she warned the British that the Americans were coming and changed the course of Canadian history and North American history as we know it. When I was a child, something in me knew that I was destined to do great things. Laura Secord is a controversial person, actually, I would say, in um, War of 1812 history as it relates to Queenston. Of course, she was a resident of Queenston Heights, uh, not Queenston Heights, of Queenston itself, the town. And uh, Laura Secord is known for her act of bravery during the War of 1812 when her house was actually billeted by American soldiers. Well, I think Laura stands as one of Canada's most well-known heroes of our past, certainly pre-Confederation heroes, and uh, 
and I think it's deserved. She lived here during the War of 1812. The yard you're in right now and this house behind me were part of a battlefield uh, during the Battle of Queenston Heights. The armies fought right through this uh, village. Uh, General Brock, who was killed in action, his body was hidden away in a house, kitty corner to the Secord's property, and James Secord was badly wounded in the fighting. And that's why, not even a year later, Laura, her husband, uh, and her five children are still uh, in this house uh, when the Americans occupy the, uh, the village. And the soldier she helps, a guy named James Fitzgibbon, repeatedly uh, writes letters saying that if it wasn't for her, uh, they wouldn't have had the overwhelming success they had at the Battle of Beaver Dams in rural Ontario. So Laura Secord was in historical books all over the place. So we, we know that she had a major part in the War of 1812. She, she was one of the ones that tipped off the British that the Americans were coming through. She saw some of the soldiers, saw what was going on, walked her cow apparently up through beaver dams and all the way to, to where the encampment was for the British and forewarned them that the, that the Americans were planning a, a raid. If that hadn't happened, we don't know what, what changes would have been to history. I mean, that, that could have been the end of the war and us on the losing side. So the historical significance of her and, and her walk is huge to this whole thing. Okay, so we have made it on the second leg, or the stage of the journey of Laura Secord's walk from Queenston, where her homestead is, to DeCue. Standing at Fireman's Park, hopefully I'm not standing in Poison Ivy, this was where Laura Secord first kind of stopped, or is what is considered the second stage of her journey. As you can see, it's still a beautiful park where people come to fish still and enjoy the sounds and the feelings of nature. In my opinion, I think that most Canadians, and certainly Niagarans, see Laura Secord as something more than just a person who creates incredible chocolate products. I think, or I certainly hope, for the most part, that we see the important role that she played during the War of 1812. Well, Laura is born in Massachusetts in 1775. Uh, she comes to Upper Canada with her family in the 1790s. Her family really comes from patriot roots, or loyalists, what are called rebels. But she marries into the Secord family, marries James Secord, and they settle here uh, and are here for a while. They have another Secord homestead in Chippewa, Ontario. But during the War of 1812, they are living um, here in Queenston. I think that she should be a great model to women uh, who are somewhat uh, overlooked in the pages of history and that here was this woman just focused on doing something and did it. She didn't fiddle around, she just did it. The significance of Laura Secord to black Canadians is, is that she was one of the white families that lived in the community that made employment available when there wasn't a lot of employment available once people arrived here or were living in the area, having arrived here after the American Revolution in particular or um, as they came as freedom seekers. So she offered people employment and the people that were employed by her, um, it was written in a letter that um, someone had and it's documented. The two people that worked for her were husband and wife named George and Flo and they worked here for her. Well, living where the Secords live, Laura gets dragged into this war because she lives in a strategic community. So if you want to move a lot of people or merchandise uh, into the interior of North America, you had to pass through the village of Queenston, basically. And whoever controlled the portage route, portage road, the local people, you controlled the Niagara Peninsula, basically. So she doesn't uh, plan on being in a war here. She just happens to live in a community that is, is stuck in it. Uh, and her home becomes a battleground. Uh, the place gets ransacked during the Battle of Queenston Heights. Uh, and obviously, when the US Army's here in 1813, she really can't go anywhere. She's sort of stuck with a wounded husband and five kids 
And so when the American army is here, she's here, stuck here too. I think she, she was infinitely more fragile than Paul Revere. And, and it, what she did was, uh, if it was a 32 kilometer walk, that was a pretty difficult thing to do. So I think in a way, she's um, more admirable. So we know at one point there are American soldiers here, commanded by a Major uh, Howick. And he's probably the guy, along with another colorful character, named Dr. Cyrenius Chapin, Buffalo, New York's first medical doctor. Uh, but he's not acting as a doctor. He's got a volunteer unit of mounted riflemen who've attached themselves to the U.S. Army. And the good doctor is fighting a guy named James Fitzgibbon, uh, who's Green Tigers or Bloody Boys, depending on how uh, you want to give him a nickname are involved in this guerrilla warfare in this area. And Chapin passes through here, may have had a conversation with this major, uh, and then Chapin goes down to Fort George to try to convince the American commanders they gotta take out this Fitzgibbon guy. And for a couple of days, there's a bit of a debate uh, amongst American commanders because none of them think it's a good idea. Uh, and finally, a guy named Borstler loses the fight, and he's the American colonel who will lead the attack on Fitzgibbon at the Q House near Brock University. But by then, Laura's already gone. She's she's listened to this conversation, or her husband has listened to the conversation, and they agree somebody has to go help and warn the forces west of here. And Laura takes it upon herself to provide military intelligence, which turns out to be accurate, and uh, helps Fitzgibbon and the Crown forces win the battle of Beaver Dam. The significance to Laura Secord for women, I believe, is that she so showed such strength of character and was um, a formidable force. She never gave up. She made that trek from here to DeCue Road, the other side of Saint, in St. Catharines area, and to do that would not have been an easy journey, but she was so determined to let the British know what was going on that I think that we can um, admire her as another woman of strength and character. Well, I think that there was the original story, and with all stories, I'm sure there was elaboration. In order to make it a better story, it became, the distance became further, the swamp became deeper, and so it's always difficult to find the truth in any story, let alone this one. She's definitely a hero to Canada. Uh, 1813 is not a good year for the defenders of Upper Canada. The Americans are occupying big chunks of what's now Ontario. So if citizens like her hadn't actively got involved in the war effort, there might not be a Canada as we know it today. To Americans, there is a plaque to her in her hometown, in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, where she was born. So to some Americans, that must mean she's some sort of traitor, but we remind people she was born in the province of Massachusetts. It hadn't become the state of Massachusetts just yet when she was born there. But on the 4th of July, there's apparently a gentleman in Great Barrington, Massachusetts, who puts a black sheet over that plaque. Yeah. Which sort of does a disservice to the other history of her family, because her father fought alongside George Washington. She just happened to marry into a staunchly loyalist family. So James Secord uh, grew up basically for a while in a refugee camp outside Fort Niagara. Okay, so we have come from Fireman's Park, which is in Niagara Falls. So I'm at the base of, if you want to call the end of Niagara Falls, to the beginning of Niagara on the Lake, which is Niagara College. This was the next leg of Laura Secord's journey going towards St. Catharines, towards our next destination, Rodman Hall, where I think she probably took a little break before she moved on to her next one after that. But having said that, what was really cool about Laura Secord is this was a woman that was driven to make this journey all on her own. She was definitely a true Canadian hero. As a teenager, I believed in equality. I believed in the integrity of my homeland.
Hi everybody, I'm Jane Sibri and I um, hope you're doing excellently. I'm, I feel like I'm inching my way towards my prime and I hope you are too because it's, it's never over till it's over. I have a detective show called P.I. Squid, six five minute episodes. I think it's pretty hilarious, although I think a lot of people don't think it's funny at all. But anyway, it's called P.I. Squid um, and I want to let you know about that. Secondly, I have a song coming out called Get These People Home by Thanksgiving, um, which is an interesting living, breathing song about um, uh, clearing the jails of people who just are in jail because they couldn't pay their fine. Question. After the War of 1812, Laura Secord opened a chocolate shop. True or false? The answer is, ding, 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 false. The chain of chocolate stores under the name of Laura Secord actually started in Toronto in 1913. On a personal note, I always thought Laura Secord was um, a, the uh, inspiration for bachelor uncles bringing lots of candy to our house. She played the Americans, I mean, we all absolutely love detective shows and crime shows, don't we? Um, because it's like a chess game, and chess games are a curiously familiar reflection of life. Everything's resonating, making this great song of each, each of our lot for each of our lives. Unique, wonderful. But she did the right thing, it seems to me, and she used physical strength and probably courage um, to do it. So. Um, I think that's always something to admire in anyone. I'm just doing the right thing, no matter what it takes. So, Laura Secord, I think you sound pretty cool. Okay, folks, as we are moseying along the Laura Secord famous walk from Queenston to DeCue, I am now standing at our next landmark, Rodman Hall, which is in St. Catharines. It was here that Laura Secord stopped briefly on her leg of the journey before heading to the next location, which is Rotary Park in St. Catharines. So, on that note, a marching we will go. Back in Laura's time, it was considered inappropriate to be cooking inside during the summer. It would heat up the house too much. So you'd bring your cooking outside, do your cooking out here, and then serve it inside. We've replicated uh, the footprint of what was the summer kitchen, but unfortunately we didn't have pictures of the property to be able to replicate what it looked like during Laura's time here. Right now we're in the gift shop of the Laura Secord Homestead. Here we demonstrate some of the arts that they would have been doing back then. This loom here is utilized to show demonstrations to school groups. It's an eight shaft loom and can do pretty much any pattern that they would have been able to do back then. When you warp the loom, all you have to do is pass it through the heddles here, through the reed, tie it onto the bar, and then you'll control the lifting of the shafts with the foot pedals. As you lift the shaft, you'll put the shuttle through and that will control the weft that goes through. Then you can beat it into place and you have your pattern set. Next to it here, we have something called the weasel. If you've ever heard the song, Pop Goes the Weasel, this is where it originates from. The weasel here would be used to measure your wool after you spin it. You put it onto the weasel, turn it 40 times, and at the 40th time, you'll hear a loud popping noise. That lets you know that you've reached a measurement known as a skein of wool, which is about 40 yards. Behind here is a spinning wheel. We do spinning demonstrations almost on a daily basis spinning anything from camel fiber to, um, you can spin anything. You can spin dog hair, you can spin horse hair, you name it, you can spin it on this spinning wheel. Back then, most of the fiber that they would have been using would have been flax or linen, which is a very long fiber, and we utilize that at the homestead quite often. So we offer tours every half hour. They take about half an hour to do. We bring you through the homestead itself, talk all about Laura, probably more than you ever wanted to know, then talk about the time period and what Laura would have been doing on a day-to-day. -day. So you're probably wondering what Laura Secord has to do with chocolate and ice cream. 
absolutely nothing. The chocolate company was started the same year as the 100th anniversary of Laura's Walk, and a man named Frank O'Connor was looking for a name for his company, heard Laura Secord's name getting thrown around, and thought, hey, that's great advertising. So he took her name, took her image, put it on the chocolate box, and the Laura Secord Chocolate Company was made. So the Secords lived here in 1803. They were living in the house until 1835 when James got a job as a customs collector. At that time, they picked up and moved to Chippewa and lived there the remainder of their lives. After that, the house was privately owned up until the 1960s. She had carpeting, plumbing, electricity, you name it, they added it to the house. Then the chocolate company bought it in the late 70s and they restored it according to a watercolor that was done in 1812. So how you see it looking now is how it looked during the war. In 1998, it was gifted to the Niagara Parks Commission and they've run it ever since. I'm very proud to be the caretaker of one of Canada's oldest homes and I love sharing it with our guests. Hi there, my name is Natalie and welcome to our home. This was once Laura Secord's house. This was her second home in the area and uh, today we run it as an Airbnb. We're glad that you're here with us today so I can share a little bit of history with you. This is Laura Secord's tree. There are old photos uh, in the Niagara Falls archives where you see a small, small tree in the front of this house. This tree remains, this is the original tree. We've taken as much care as we possibly could to keep this tree alive so that Laura Secord's memory remains. Laura Secord actually taught school here, um, right beyond these walls. It was the first uh, public school in the area of Upper Canada. So we're glad to share that with our guests. We love sharing the history of the area with our guests. Chippewa is a wonderful little community and we invite you to come and stay with us and be part of history. We love sharing our home and the history of Laura Secord. You can expect to hear lots of local history, a little bit of haunted stories, uh, when you're staying with us. The loft bedroom is a separate entrance, king bedroom, uh, which we are very proud about. And uh, we love having guests from all over the world stay with us. We have so many stories that we love to share and history of uh, the, the area. So folks, I am standing at Rotary Park. I believed wholeheartedly that my country was worth saving. I was not limited by any distance. Doing what was right was my primary motivation. What do Canadians, that is, those who have immigrated to Canada, think about Laura Secord, or do they even know who Laura Secord is, and what effect or what influence she had on Canadians today? Hi, my name is Mick Majid and I am from Kenya originally and as a Canadian now I have felt amazingly fortunate that I have traveled all across Canada and settled in an area where Laura Secord was a key individual that uh, saved the uh, Canadian soil. As an Iraqi um, Canadian who arrived in 1972, Laura Secord Canada represents to me uh, the freedom, uh, the refuge uh, from political um, uh, dictatorship, uh, which we experienced. Uh, hi everyone, my name is Laurie Goldman. I'm a proud Canadian. I'm a proud Jewish man. Uh, I am very proud of my heritage and talking about heritage uh, in Canada, um, Laura Secord, uh, a very famous heroine. She actually helped uh, the uh, Canadian or and or I guess the British uh, loyalists, uh, the British troops um, defend off the Americans by uh, uh, befriending them and getting their secrets about what their plans were and uh, traveling great distances in order to warn um, our early uh, settlers what was coming and uh, to defend our nation and our country which she did so successfully. So we have to be very thankful 
to Laura Secord uh, for everything uh, that she's done in our Canadian history. Hi, I'm Monica. I immigrated from Poland and this is... Lucas, and I was born in Canada. When I first came to Canada, I was introduced to Laura Secord as the great Canadian heroine. And what I think is that Laura didn't really set out to be a hero. Uh, she just did what she felt was right for her to do. And no matter how big or small your contribution is, as long as you do believe uh, in what you're doing, you can be a hero as well. She is a defender, defender of her political views and someone who stood up for her and actually acted on her instinct to make sure that she protects the land that she loved. As an Italian Canadian, uh, having been born in Niagara Falls, Ontario, Canada, grew up in Niagara Falls, uh, I was pleased, extremely pleased to have been um, chosen for the um, honor of being the bride and groom, centennial bride and groom of the year for the city of Niagara Falls uh, by the Niagara Falls Review. Uh, that was quite an honor and quite unexpected, but in 1967, the, the city of Niagara Falls wanted to uh, pay homage to the uh, 100th birthday of Canada. And so they had this contest where they were going to choose the centennial bride and groom of the year. And I was chosen. Being Italian, um, I was uh, more than pleased uh, because I've always considered myself a Canadian first and an Italian second. One of the nice things that came out of it was they created the costume, costumes of 1867 and myself, my bride, and the bride, bridal party were all dressed in uh, uh, similar costumes. The city took us on an historic tour to Niagara the Lake, and that's where I came across the home of Laura Secord. To be honest with you, up until that time, I had heard of Laura Secord, did not know much about it, did not know the home existed. But they took us there, horse and buggy, and we uh, posed outside of the home and got a brief history of uh, Laura Secord and um, the uh, contribution that she made to Canadian society. And we got to view the house and the exterior of the house and also the area of uh, Queenston. That to me was, besides the wedding, <laughs> was uh, the icing on the cake. She's a historical figure. She helped change the landscape. She is uh, single-handedly very much um, you know, the, the reason that things played out the way they did. And why we sing O Canada as our national anthem because of her great heroic efforts. So I've been lucky enough to walk that same path that she walked a couple hundred years ago. And she is right now buried at the site of the bloodiest battle ever fought on Canadian soil, the Battle of Lundy's Lane. And we've got a historic cemetery there, and that's where she's been laid to rest. Well, I wanted to tell you a bit of an interesting story that I have what you might call a sort of a six degrees of separation from Laura Secord in my ancestry. And the way that works is that Laura Secord's husband's father, James Secord Sr., was a, was a loyalist who, who fought with Butler's Rangers and settled in the Niagara area after the American Revolution. As it happens, three of my loyalist ancestors also fought in Butler's Rangers and settled with him. And in fact, James Secord, her father-in-law, brought about 46 soldiers and men into a, a tiny area just west of the Niagara River to settle them in that spot. And my loyalist ancestor had a plot of land quite near his. So for me, as a genealogist, we always like to put flesh to the bones and find out more than just dates and names. And I really like to imagine, because of course I have no proof of this, but I like to imagine that they were friends. And I, certainly they were army buddies, they fought together. But I like to imagine that they were friends and perhaps, perhaps, um, the Secords and the Volicks, my guys, perhaps they attended each other's parties and weddings and funerals. And for me, that's just, uh, it humanizes Laura Secord and her husband and her in-laws for me. Thank you.
Behind me is the ruins of the DeCue House. As you can see, I am standing at the final resting place of Laura Secourt's famous journey from Queenston Heights to DeCue Falls, or also Morning Star Mill, which is over on the other side of the ruins of the famous DeCue House. So it was at this place here that Laura Secourt finally ended her journey to warn the British that the Americans were coming and perhaps save the British and Canadians that is, and change the outcome of Canadian history. I would live to be 93 years old, but my legacy would live on for Canadians. Many view me as a heroine to Canada. When we do what is right, we are all heroes to our causes. Forever, I am now Canadian.